Hi right, folks, this is Mike with Eminem Precision Painting. This video, we're gonna to try to show you guys how to use an airless sprayer. It's a little windy out here, so forgive me if the audio is a little, or whatever. Um, but before we do, go ahead and hit that subscribe button over there, you guys. It really helps me a lot. Give us a like, and here we go, guys. Why you still looking at me? All right, you guys, so <laughs> setup we're using today, if you're a homeowner and you're just going to like rent an airless or something, uh, they should give you instructions on how to use it. But if they don't, um, just show you guys real quick. Uh, I'm using a Graco Ultramax 2, the newer Bluetooth model. Um, we are using a 30 inch gun extension. This is a Titan, even though I'm using a Graco, I'm using a Titan tip. This is an HEA high efficiency airless. Um, Saves on your paint, you can run at a lower t uh, pressure, and it uh, doesn't atomize the droplets as much, so you get less overspray. Um, that being said, at, with this tip, we run at about 1400 PSI. A uh, normal tip, you want to run at about uh, 2200, any, anywhere between 18 and 2200 PSI. Uh, one of the ways to figure it out, if you don't have, say, a digital readout, is you want to just do a test pattern and if you have fingers in your paint you want to crank the pressure up a little bit you want that pressure to be just high enough to where those fingers disappear and then you you're pretty much at the right uh pressure um yeah so that's what we're using today like i said hea tip less pressure if you're using a regular graco <coughs> tip you're going to want to run at 1800 to 2200 psi all right guys so one of the things i wanted to mention is the size of the tip i'm using is a 515. i have uh, videos on explaining airless tips i'll put it right up here in the corner for you guys go ahead and click on that if you want to watch that um we're using a 515 and all that means is the five on the tip the first number is gonna it's gonna indicate the width of your spray pad spray pattern or your spray fan at 12 inches from your wall um, sometimes i spray a little closer than 12 inches so i don't get as as wide of a fan pattern especially with the daylight today when it's windy i'll tend to go a little closer to avoid less over to get less overspray um, so yeah we're using 515 hea Graco also makes 515 also if you're using a titan regular tip about the same pressure you guys so <laughs> this is a cardboard shield little holder with an extension goes in pretty easy just like that oh, we use these mainly to mask around our bases okay but first before we even get into that let me just go ahead and show you guys you want to be about 10 to 12 inches away from your wall <laughs> and what you want to do is when you're spraying these okay you want to you want to stay as straight as you can if you hit it at an angle like this you can see this wall's texture so what will happen is your spray will go this way and you'll have light spots on the top of those ridges. All right, so you wanna kinda of stay straight, but at the same time, you gotta remember, it's a happy medium between straight and a little tilted. So you wanna be a little tilted because you wanna get under that lip right here. And all you're doing, folks, is you wanna 10 to 12 inches away, consistent speed, okay? And you wanna overlap on every pass by 50%. I'll show you. really windy you want to avoid overspray you got cars you can put your shield here when you're on that end to avoid whipping around that corner if it's super windy so that's how we spray you guys so 50 percent overlap And that's what you want to do the 50 cent overlaps to ensure you get the right mills millage on your uh, thickness on your paint 
So we're using this shield. We're just going around the base of these things. Just like that, all the way down, 50% overlap. Also, you guys, in these corners right here, what I like to do is I'll just kick it sideways. Some people like to shoot like this. Okay, you can do that. I just like to hold it this way. You just run up my sides, sort of at an angle. So I know I'm getting up under there really good. Because a lot of times on this trim, you'll have raw wood. You really got to soak it. Corners are thirsty. Um, yeah, guys, so that's how we do that. 50% overlap all the way down your wall. Another thing to keep in mind, you guys, can they see me? Another thing to keep in mind, you guys, is on your edge, you want to keep a wet edge, okay? And a lot of people will tell you this also, to like fan out like this. You don't have to do that. What I found is these tips also do tilt just a little bit. So if you're not quite tall enough, But what I've found on these, as long as you keep a wet edge, in other words, you don't want this drying up before you paint over it because you'll get a different thickness of paint. <clears throat> so if you maintain a wet edge, and instead of whipping off like this in the, in the end, just go, just go a good 8 to 12 inches overlap into your other paint. Because what will happen is it, if you don't do that and you try to stop right here, the distinction between the thickness of the paint is going to be so so vast that it's going to show like a striping pattern right there. So you want to overlap pretty decent amount. See there? Just like that. 50% consistent speed, 10 to 12 inches away, happy medium between straight and a little bit of angle. Got it? Right, guys pretty easy that's how you use an airless sprayer I got videos I'm gonna put up here in the end probably now um, how to set up an airless how to clean out an airless airless tips explained all that stuff subscribe if you like this channel hit that little bell notification and for now that's it folks and we'll see you on the next one thanks Are you still looking at me? Are you still